clearly a dramatic day in the Senate's Public Accounts Committee. That has since been adjourned. And TV's Trevor Mbija was covering that. What should have been an ordinary audit hearing until this happened, Trevor? What led to this? Absolutely. That was one intense in situation there, Larry. And what you've seen is just a tidbit of the fight that actually happened. What was going on is that governor was being held to account over the expenditure of the county by the Public Accounts and Investment Committee. And then the senator, Songko, started mentioning that he has acquired land in very fraudulent ways. In fact, he even mentioned that the governor ended up murdering some people just to acquire some land. And that is where the fight started. In fact, at some point, we were thrown out as the media, as the fight degenerated. Because there's a bit a of that that we don't see on camera. There's uh, yeah. Songko and the, and the governor are exchanging words, but we don't have that on camera. Why is that? Explain to our viewers why is it we didn't have that bit on camera. At that point, we actually were kicked out. This, the footage you've just seen is pretty much exclusive to NTV because our camera happened to be in there, but it was facing one particular direction. Right. But at some point, we managed to sneak in just a bit to get the tail end of the fight. But the fight became so bad, the sergeant at arms had to come in to kick out Mike Sonko. But Sonko tells, tells us after that that he wasn't exactly kicked out, that it was just adjourned. But from the people we were there, we saw him being right. dragged out. And of course, his security coming after him and the media, we were kept quite a distance. That's why you could also see the shaky foot it's just that our camera happened to be in there. All right. Sonko insists that he has evidence and he says he's doubled the evidence before the police. He's even written to EACC. He's even written to the governor himself. But he says he's not gotten quite a good response from the governor and that's the reason why he was livid. The governor himself was also very irate at that point. It says that we couldn't get him on camera because we were barred from moving closer to the room. But the, the, the meeting has now been adjourned maybe for the next one hour or two. But Bef after that, we managed to run into Mike Sonko when he was just walking out and he had uh, some reactions, listening to what he had to say. Okay, the main point of contention, yes. uh, we are on rates. And under, same, and, and under rates, I've got issues to raise on behalf of the great people of uh, Nairobi. I'm the county senator. I'm mandated by the constitution to represent their interest as the, as the, as the, as the county senator. For instance, we have a case. Mr. Maji, Senator. For instance, we have a case, a very, a very sad case. Um, in Demilen, um, Gong Road. A case of uh, one uh, Mr. Hawa, whose wife was killed when he was evicted by the county officers. Hawa uh, took uh, his wife for treatment in India. As uh, he was in India, there was a fake uh, rate claim that was raised by the county, amounting to six million. He was willing to pay. But because he was not around, because of his, his, I mean his wife's illness, he was in India. When he came back, the second third day, the county goons, hired goons and uh, um, maybe the, 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 the auctioneers and the guys, the governor's proxies who had bought that property, uh, stormed uh, the property along Gong Road. A property worth, uh, we have a good evaluation of that property, property worth uh, uh, over two billion. Uh, Kenya shillings. An eviction was uh, carried by auctioneers and county goons hired by the governor. Uh, the family was thrown out. In the process, the wife was killed. I have a death certificate to confirm this. I have video clips to confirm this. I have uh, 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 medical documents to confirm it is indeed true that the wife was in India for, for medical uh, uh, treatment. She had a problem. She had a heart complication. So uh, when she was evicted, in the process, she was killed. But the guys who were hired to do the eviction, they were hired by the, the county government. How was she killed? Uh, through the eviction process. She was roughed up, she was thrown out, she had a hole in the heart. In the process, she, she succumbed to, to maybe the injuries. Now, my only uh, bitterness, this is only uh, there's so many cases, similar cases. Yeah? People have confidence in my office. So many. Uh, uh, different people, they come to my office to uh, uh, raise uh, these similar cases. But let me concentrate on one case because there are so many cases, but I want to give you maybe, um, uh, maybe or to raise one case which has uh, concrete ev evidence. 
after the eviction of that uh, lady, she succumbed. All right, so Trevor, the, guy, the senator is trying to explain exactly yeah. why that happened. But did he explain exactly why it degenerated into an actual physical fight? I did ask him whether that was the best way he would behave. And he said that he had no choice under that circumstance because he's saying that the people of, of Nairobi County are becoming to him. And he's been trying to reach out to the governor and the ECC and the police. And nothing is happening. In fact, he continued to make even much more wild allegations saying that the governor buys the police. The governor buys people at the ECC. And that's the reason why he's concrete. He says he has concrete concrete evidence is not being adduced anywhere. It's just not going anywhere. And they said that that was the only time he could handle that situation because he says he was very bitter about the killings that's going on in favor of the governor. Of course, those are wild allegations. We're just hope, waiting to see if he'll actually table the evidence in front of the police or the ESEC and maybe some action may be taken. All right. If, I want to just show you that video again, especially near the tail end where the actual uh, fight is caught on tape. It's, it's, it's an important part of what we're discussing. And a lot of people will ask, who exactly threw the first punch? And how did it get to that, Trevor? Yeah, ex <laughs> interestingly, Mike, w when he was speaking to him out there, he said that he wasn't going to get physical right. until the governor allegedly told him that I would punch you. And then you can even hear tidbits of that conversation and right. him asking the governor whether he thinks he's his son. Mm -hmm. He even told us out there that with the, when the governor said that he would punch me, I asked him, does he think I'm his son? That means we can handle this like men outside. So I think it's just one of those situations where a bit of integrity was thrown out and the honorables were not so honorable after all and they wanted to square it out physically we just happened to be there and I think even the cameras being there helped a bit because then they tried to tone it down a bit but eventually we were still kicked out and told to wait all right so this is the actual raw footage that just came into us so we apologize because some of the language may be a bit coarse we haven't uh, had time to process all of it properly we will in fact do so but in the meantime if we could just take this video slightly forward to near the end of the tape where the actual fight is got on tape, Trevor. It's extraordinary the fact that the governor and the senator are not exactly on the best of terms. This is common knowledge. They have tried to sometimes pretend or show face that uh, they're working together. But this kind of throws water in the face of all of that. Exactly. In fact, it's, uh, one of the main things there is that the senator himself has actually said that he is interested in the gubernatorial seat come 2017. That may be one of the things that has just played out there. Mm -hmm. And of course, he kept saying, even when he was speaking to him out there, he kept saying that the people of Nairobi expect me to do something. Of course, trying to win the hearts of the people of Nairobi, who he knew might eventually watch this and just to let them know that he's actually fighting for their rights and claiming that the governor is really just out to really just get amass all the wealth he can for himself and does not have the interest of the people at heart. But then eventually the, the main question here is, does he really have the evidence towards the, all the allegations that he's made? Because then eventually this having been caught on tape, it could also bring in some legal implication. And the governor says that he called him murderer, he called him thief in front of cameras. It's all recorded there. And maybe if it wants him to prove why he'd call him that, then we'd have a different court battle altogether. Let's talk about the actual fight itself, because this yes. is at the heart of what we're talking about. And when Senator Sonko throws this punch, does the governor, does he look like he is defending himself or is he <laughs> fighting all out? <laughs> Interesting, the security teams were there already. So it was really just a push and shove. Right. The security guys were trying to stay in between them. When they were overwhelmed, then the Sergeant Rams had to come in. He came in with a group of about five or six people. So all of them were standing in between the governor and the senator. Interestingly, you can see the governor smiling, but then people tell me that people know him say that when he's livid, he tends to smile. So you can't really tell whether he's irate or he's just trying to hold his own. But then eventually they also noticed that the cameras were there. But what we saw is that the security personnel and the sergeant at arms with a group of about six people were standing right between them, making some sort of a barrier so that the punches wouldn't really cross to the other side. All right, let's listen into this video again. This is my brother. Yeah. 
That's the kind of confusion that goes on there because at the tail end you can also hear the governor saying this is my brother trying to cool him down. Right. He says I have no problem with the governor but I have a problem with his people. So mm -hmm. you see it's the same thing he said out there. He said that the people who evicted that lady who he claims was killed in the process were had the blessings from the governor. So it's really an interesting thing to see how it develops eventually. Alright many thanks Trevor Mbija who's been covering that for us. Hopefully we expect to hear a lot more from uh, a reaction from the governor. We're reaching out to his team and to get a statement or something of that sort just to make sense of what exactly happened and his reaction to the senator's claims